Ha! Surprise upload so quickly after the last one. Bet you weren't expecting this, were you? This video is very different in style from the usual meme guides, being shorter and more chaotic. A bit like a crash course. You know what else is crashing? My last two brain cells because I wrote this script in 20 minutes and edited the video in about 6 hours, compared to the 50 plus hours it took for the last episode. So enough about the video, let's talk about the Object 292 now. During the final years of the Soviet Union, new armor improvements were expected on both sides of the Iron Curtain, and to counter these, monstrously large caliber guns were tested on both sides of the curtain. A new anti-tank gun family was developed to arm the MBTs of the future. The new cannon was built in two variants in the Soviet side, LP-83 and two A-83 cannons. These guns both shared the caliber of 152mm, a monstrous caliber for the time. But not surprising, as both NATO and the Soviets were expecting major improvements in armor which resulted in the equally crazy NATO 140mm prototypes on the other side of the curtain. The Soviet 152mm guns would find their way into three main testbed prototypes. The first of these was an integration test, seeing if a 152 was even possible to mount on Soviet hulls. Remember, Soviet tank hulls were notably smaller than the NATO ones at the time, and the existing hulls were already cramped with the 152mm. So an unmanned T-72 hull mated with a 2A83 cannon was to test if the suspension of the tanks could handle the increased weight, along with the recoil of the massive schlong. The second prototype followed the success of the first, and was officially designated Object 292, built in mid-1990. This was just a T-80BV mixed with a T-80U, with the LP-83 gun slapped on top. The autoloader would not fit in the T-80 hull, and the turret had a cutout in the back as a result, added for the secondary autoloader rack used to store the giant 152mm charges. Yes, just like the hit pirate anime, the ammo in this thing is two-piece. Now is a good time to point out that Gaijin has fucked up this tank completely in War Thunder. The APFSDS should have about 100mm more pen, the turret should have considerably less armor, and the engine should have a lot more horsepower, making this thing even more of a glass cannon than it already is. Anyways, after the 292, the Soviet Union collapsed, but the dreams of a 152mm long schlong did not. In 1995, there was the Object 195 with an unmanned turret carrying the 2A83 gun, built as the third prototype to test future integration of the technology into the T-14. But nobody gives a shit about that because this video is about the 292, so let's talk about the Object 292 in-game now. Okay, those of you watching this on Valentine's Day when this video came out, instead of taking a woman, are probably wondering, wait, isn't the 292 available tomorrow and not today? How do you already have a video out on it? And to that, I admit, I faced the same dilemma. But one professional and polite email to the snail god sugar daddy later, and that problem was very easily fixed. So without further ado, here is how I found the Object 292 in gameplay. Keep in mind, I seriously suck at ground. Like, I really, really do. Especially high tier ground. I think it's just point and click simulator with zero skill involved, and the 292 being the definition of a glass cannon amplifies that playstyle even more. Let's start with the biggest factor of this tank, literally the biggest. Like all other questionably under-tiered objects in the game, this one makes me in contempt about the size of my own object down there. Like goddamn is this gun comically long. You know what else is comically long? My p patience as I wait for this thing's reload time. Even with an autoloader, your reload is a death sentence at this battle rating. But that usually doesn't matter anyways, since anything you click on will usually cease to exist in one shot. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it for you, buddy. Because let's be real here, a 7kg tungsten rod traveling at over 5 times the speed of sound impacting a steel plate is enough to generate the kinetic energy equivalent to that of my ass cheeks clapping while walking down the stairs. In other words, anything inside the tank will turn into paste, and if the tank has spall liners, then you can remedy that issue by gently applying 46kg of 30F23 high explosive directly to the forehead of the enemy. So instead of clicking on it with the APFSDS, you can just click on it with the HE, which has over 8 kilograms of TNT equivalent, by the way. Land this HE shell on the optics or cupola, and sadly the enemy crew will suffer a very small headache from having their pasty remains smeared across the nth dimension. If Michael Schumacher turned into a vegetable because of a collision with a tree, these guys are going to turn into the whole damn salad because of your telephone pole throwing small yield nuclear weapons at them. But that's where the good stuff ends. You have no coaxial machine gun, no thermals, no bitches, and no armor. You are literally the glass cannon of all time. 
If you don't kill your target in one shot, or engage multiple targets at once, you're fucking dying today because your armor is a base model T-80B, and the prototype never had the ERA that makes the T-80's armor so trolly. So while your crew are preparing a three-course meal with dessert during the abysmal reload time, your commander is gonna be on suicide watch, looking at that leopard traverse its turret towards you. Oh, and see that bustle in the back? This is modeled as a mechanized Amorak, not a blowout Amorak. If anything hits these charges in the turret bustle, you will not be playing War Thunder, you'll be playing Kerbal Space Program with how far your turret is gonna fly. T-72s may have won the turret toss gold medal at the Ukraine 2022 Olympics, but that's only because the 292 was disqualified for doping. Yeah, your gun hits harder than a Union Pacific freight train and takes longer to reload than a mobility scooter user loading the toilet at Taco Bell. Your armor is the kind of cardboard the r-slash-non-credible defense describes all Russian tanks as, and your turret will fly so high when you get Amorak that it will make the Russian space program inviable again. Which will happen because 90% of your interior is an Amorak. Is this thing overpowered as Reddit claimed it's gonna be? Hell no. Is it balanced though? No, still. Is it fun? Probably, I guess? I don't know, I hate ground and I don't enjoy it anyways. But for all of you dongs in my Discord and in the comments yapping about the ground video, here you go. I hope you're happy now because I had to delay the next meme guide and a second surprise video to make this shit. So, on to the modifications now. Since this thing isn't a premium and you need to stock grind it, Step 1, uh, my shit came spaded from Gaijin. So there you have it, that's your Object 292 fully spaded and ready to Start with improved parts. Then the laser rangefinder, FPE, crew replenishment, elevation mechanism cause goddamn that massive and heavy gun takes forever to elevate, engine, transmission, rest of your performance modifications, then whatever you like. I don't know, the last time I spaded a tank above 8.0 was the last time Gaijin gave us a questionably undertiered long dong object as an event vehicle, four whole years ago. I just GE'd all the mods on high-tier tanks since then, and I won't blame you if you do the same. And there you have it. That's a quick crash course emergency meme review of the Object 292. So until next time, go out there, swing your long and girthy gun around while you penetrate other men's tanks until they explode. And don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed, or tell me in the comments if you like this new shorter crash course style of meme guides, instead of the 30-minute talkathon I usually do. Anyways, see you next time.